Mate, what do you think of Origin last night? You're obviously gloating there with your jersey on. <laughs> yeah, it was a, I mean, it played out pretty much as expected after that incident with Suali'i afterwards. Like, you, you had to expect that the Queensland were going to come home strong over the top once New South Wales got tired. I was really impressed by how long the Blues held in there and even ate away at the deficit a little bit with Lomax going over. He he had, he had a really good game. Hey, it was it's a good selection by New South Wales to have him on the wing. Yeah, he did really well. There's a couple even like Spencer probably even played better than maybe what we have thought. I suppose like he has that type of game, but we just haven't seen enough of it, have we, in recent history? Yeah, it was a good one. It was it was funny because we were all waiting with bated breath to see how this would affect things moving forwards and if we could predict what game two would look like and two or three different things conspired to basically sh- keep the keep the rumor mill going and now we really aren't sure how it's going to pan out f- uh, over the next few weeks so we had um things like cotter playing for 69 minutes i think you brought that up yeah. before we started it it just muddies the water who is playing and who isn't playing this week if if we don't get Cotter, how many are you probably fielding at the moment? Uh, pre-trades, no Cotter would be three down. So not terrible, but not ideal. And then there's a little bit of chatter going around about Armstrong as well, hey? Yes, I've seen that. Like The, the, the chat and the whispers won't go away. I've seen random people saying, oh, my mate who's a Knight's... Fan hmm. who's usually dead on about these things says Sharp's going to debut. It, we're just going to find out probably in the last update, aren't we? So it's a really tough one for which what trades we want to make. Um, and do we take out a Hines? Do we keep Hines in because we think Moses is going to pick for Origin two? Do we take Cotter out? Do we, it, it's a bit of a mess. And I think if you somehow field seventeen this week without absolutely blowing up your team, you're going to do pretty well. Yeah, definitely. Because you're in the same boat as me then, aren't you? It'd be seven if Cotter's out. Yeah, it's it's a tough one because I want to sell Sam Hughes because he's dropping cash like nobody's business, but he's a green dot. And how much do we factor that in? So cash versus points, it's going to be a tough one. And we might have to organize and order our trades so that we can reverse out as late as possible on some of them. Look, take game order to uh, game order well into our thoughts when setting this up. So guys, some things that uh, are not talked about as much in fantasy, but are pretty niche, but you learn over time are things like ordering your trades in, in game order, if you can, so that you can reverse. I remember a lot of us captains Tedesco, so we couldn't duck out uh, the other week, but if for some reason we brought him in and we didn't, he played the last game, so we could have just avoided that situation. Now we're at another one down for round 14. So those sort of situations teach us how to order our trades and what it's like. But yeah, this week could be a very important week again for that. Definitely. And may, it may as well speak about that now, mate, because we've got if Cowboys and obviously Cotter. What about the um three highest tackle counts? We're from three Cowboys. Robson. Yeah, that's good. Na- didn't Nana top it with like forty eight or something crazy? Yeah, he played the full. He's the only one to play the full eighty in that yeah. side. And people are like, oh, I should he even be in the team, but he always just performs for, yeah. for the Maroons, doesn't he? So we're looking at Cotter. He's in the third game of the round. Outside of that, I suppose the Dragons aren't too relevant. Hunt, Lomax, and the like. Titan side, yeah, no, no relevance there. Same with the bunnies and then it's that first one with the with the cotter situation really and from there like later on the week you'd expect guys like isaiah yo and and to'o and these types of guys to back up for sure luai you'd imagine good chance of coming back as well and and then it's armstrong in that third to last game so how would you look to play this in your sort of spreadsheet in terms of oh okay i might have to make an extra trade if a cotter or an Armstrong is out, how would you play this? It's a tough one because there are a couple of guys that we're potentially looking at in the earlier teams, especially Tigers Fords. So you guys like your Twiles, Seifarths, your Toikamanus, Fainus, they're in contention for replacing some of our missing middles or Sam Hughes and things like that. So I think there's not really a full way out of all of it, 
but if we can lock in a trade to get our tiger from one guy that we know for sure that we want to get rid of, like potentially, I don't know, an Ethan Strange on the buy, I think that's the order you should be looking to get that Tigers player into your team with, something that you aren't going to regret missing out on later if they play or having that uncertainty until until the, the time of that game. Yeah, so let's just go to your side for, for a starter. After fixing up your starting 13, are you covering all positions without Cotter and Armstrong at the moment? I think I... I need a mid if I'm selling Hughes. I need an edge for sure. I only have those two edges at the moment. So it makes somebody like Fafita very tempting. But um, do they change winning formula? Do they just bring him in? Was Billy just trying to light a fire under him and then they bring him back in? That's the probably the main decision I've got to make this week. So I'm looking for an edge, potentially a middle, and probably bringing in hands because hands just looks the goods if he's going to play be basement price and playing big minutes at hooker. So that's where my situation is sitting at currently. And possibly that third trade or that fourth trade, probably more like the third trade might be somebody like uh, a cotter to one of these other guys. As long as I, as long as I've got news on some or somebody like Armstrong by then it, it's, it's a really hard one to, to juggle this week because the game order is a bit messed up from where we'd like it to be, but we've got to make do with as much as we can. So you're still looking at moving on Hughes, even with all the, like you're looking to play with 16 uh, or something? I want to just because, I, I want to just because he's going to lose a lot of money, but it is points. So I think, didn't didn't Gould say, oh, they were just giving him a rest this week because uh, for that 15 minute one stint one, because he's young and he's, had a couple of games in a row. So they could be, he comes out and gets a 30 or a 35 and that'd be really good. I'm probably going to have yeah. to trade out somebody instead of him. For sure. You'll still lose money, but it won't be yeah, horrendous if he gets up to normal minutes. Like it's 54. Yeah. So if you got a 30, you'd still lose sort of 20 odd 30 K. Um, yeah. But I suppose in that scenario, it's like maybe you can take those points. And if you're getting Brennan hands, you're getting the cash back from that might be a little option. Or if you're not getting hands, maybe you can sell, Sam in this one, but then again, he's got a buy next week. Do you just cop the, you know, let's just say he does get a 33, like the 33 less points. Like what's that worth to you in terms of the cash to the, you know, trading him out to not worry yeah, about. He's definitely a trade a next, sell week. next week. It's yeah, just, right. do you have enough mids pretty much? And at the moment I don't. So unless I go something a bit crazy, like double tigers, uh, I really probably need to keep Hughes. So we'll have to see how it ends up. Yeah. But yeah. Do you have a, a tiger mid in mind? There's obviously three of them at the moment. Twali, Safarth as well, doesn't look too bad. And then Fino as well. I just don't know how to read it. I've had Twile and Safarth both in and out of my team uh in trades this week, but I'm just kind of waiting a little bit because I don't trust that bench. I think it might change late and I might make my decision based on that. What do you think will change there? They've got they've got a couple of guys who can play. I don't. I don't know what Naden Bench is going to do. Like, where What's does he with play? Does he just come on. Yeah, does Kapoa come in too? Because he like, can't he make can the team, edge. can he? Got like, yeah, all of these guys can sort of play middle and edge, which is sort of pushing me towards twelve. Because like Safarth with you'd think with Bateman and IPAP gone would go. Oh fantastic that's great minutes but they've got a lot of guys who can do both middle and edge so it's not as a, not as a certain thing so i'm probably moving more towards twile but so far is very attractive at that price and scores well at edge i think his uh 80 minute edge average is over 50 for about yeah. five or six games that he's done that yeah and he got stefano as well yeah well he's not had the greatest minutes over probably the last month, but with the injuries, he has to step up a bit and probably, probably I would have back him to hit about 50 minutes and 50 points. And through this origin period, that would be very handy with that Tigers schedule and um, those missing players. He looks pretty safe not to make origin as well. Mate, uh, captaincy this week, is it kind of for feet or a bust or is there other options that you could play as well? 
Yeah, well, uh, at the in my team at the moment, it's looking pretty dire because can't Captain Grant backing up because he could play 55 minutes. Uh, can't Captain anybody like Weeks or anything. So uh, it might be a good one to just gamble on for feet and bring him for those captaincy points because we, we saw what he did um last year some once when he came back from origin he scored like 15 in 40 minutes and the other one when we were rubbing our hands greedily thinking he's going to be so cheap he scored 90 on us so i mm. think he will go very well he's got a point to prove it's he just looks the best one this week is he the edge you're going for likely uh, as i discuss it more and more it just seems like he's he just fits well with my team and I've got enough trades compared to a couple of others that I'm happy to maybe lose one there because he'll be in my final team anyway. Yeah. Congrats on your 722, mate, as well. Just just snuck ahead of me and obviously you made plenty of ranks. How many did you end up making this week? Uh, I made about 8,000, which was great. It was more than I expected, actually. I think there were a lot of people up the top who were either head-to-head -head or didn't plan for it as much. So... I went from 18.9 to 10.8 there. So that was pretty good. Awesome. Maybe my estimates of where I finish up at the end of the year can be revised and I can hopefully track down maybe top 3,000, even maybe top 2,000 to finish or something. But yeah, that's well, a while away. We'll see how we go. That's the thing. Yeah. If you're able to make moves like that in, in a week, in a round that I thought was probably easier, 13, than, than what like, you know, 19 mm -hmm. might be. If everyone runs out of trades, like, how many people did you see did three and four trades last week and and then like oh, probably yeah. the same this week? Yeah, absolutely. And people are running out. I think the average at the end of last week was 10.8 trades. And that's the top thousand too. So yeah, yeah that's the top thousand too. And I found it interesting. First place uh, is like 100 points clear of third, but he's max trade. He got four trades left. So there's going to yeah. be guys like that that will also fall away. And we we could come up through the ranks more than we expect, even with some pretty ordinary starts this season. You could be primed for a really good run. Yeah, we'll see how we go. If I can get 17 on the park this week, I think it, it'll be a, a pretty good rank move. And I suppose other people that do it, if they went hard last week and then go hard again to get 17, then yeah, it could just be a lack of trades later on. But that round 19, I think is going to be the biggest move of the year for anyone who can get that full 13 on the park for that one. How many trades you end up with now, mate? And how many did you use last week? Um, I think I have 13. So I ended up making what I get. Yeah. I ended up getting the Tedesco trade wrong. Unfortunately, yeah. locked myself into captain, but yeah, I've got 13 the four trades and probably going to go down to about 10. I'd say. Yeah, Something okay. Like so we'll probably be probably the same unless we lose if we lose Armstrong and Cotter, I'll definitely be making four. Yeah. Um if they both play, I'm I'm hoping to just do three. Yeah. Which will get so me. How strong. crazy would that be? For more four more trades. A lot of people will be in dire straits then. Yeah, that's right. So then it'll just be hopefully you've yeah, you know, if you are trading out some origin guys, then you're a bit better set up for the coming weeks, I suppose. It's probably the only sort of positive there. If you are selling Heinz, Brighton, Cotter, like you're removing a lot of those origin guys. Mates, thoughts on the Heinz situation now? Like even if he doesn't, let's just say he gets punted from origin, right? He still has a buy in round 16 and 20. So you'd just be adding him for 19 only as the definite extra. Is it worth it anyway? It It's a really rough one. And the way I look at it is the... There's a bit of a gap this year to some of the good scorers. Like there's not as many guys who are threatening 70 all the time. And you really need one of them in your team as a good captain. So for Fida and Hines, guys like that, I think if you're not getting for Fida, you have to hold Hines and just get those good captaincy scores to keep up. And if you're trading him out, you're probably going to want to trade him back in as well. And do we have that many trades? So yeah. I'm probably going to hope that we do get Heinz for round 19 because he would be the primary captain target in that week mm. and see how we go. But yeah, uh, what did you, do you reckon that he will be available for uh, the back end of origin? Yeah. I think it's probably 50, 50 at the moment. If he, if he keeps his spot, um, but obviously injuries and stuff come into that as well. Like, you know, Moses could get injured again or there's really no one else that I think they'd pick in his spot. And, He's just, I need, I feel sorry for him. He's just been, yes, like he hasn't played 
tremendously well in the, in the chances that he's got, but he's been shafted having to defend out at center and wing and all this stuff <laughs> in his time out there against like, it's such a gun Maroon's team. But yeah. Yeah. I think, I think what he needs in that origin arena is a bit of time to gel with some of the guys with his style. And there's, the time isn't being given to him properly because he's all something has always happened. So it might end up that he disappears for a, another year and he gets called back up again, but we'll have to see how it plays out. I think they, my opinion is that they really looked like they needed a kicker last night. And although much, it was improved in the second half, it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out uh, for that second team. Cause Moses, I reckon is a pretty big threat. Yeah, definitely. It did look like at times as well, they were a little bit muddled in that middle section and one guy had gone run and then you just like palm off someone, spin around and be like, oh, where do I go? Or like, yeah, there just wasn't any real yeah. flow to it. Whereas you could see Queensland just forward, going forward, going forward. Like yeah. in that scenario, they were like, rather than just, okay, let's just hit, make a hit up, get down quick, quick play the ball and go. It was kind of like, oh, I'm trying to make something out of nothing, which can happen when you're down to it, isn't it? Like it's just, it's just, you see too much of it. Just yep. very repetitive. New South Wales year on year, how it how it looks to be honest, it's it's not good enough. <laughs> but yeah, what do you think on Crichton? Then he obviously looks very 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 set in Origin. But if you're having to sell one of Hines or Crichton, which one would you go? Yeah, I'd probably go Crichton. Like he's finally at a price uh, where he's just about leveled out. He's an absolute gun, but he just looks set in that team. And the Roosters have only. Uh, just having their first buy now, so he will miss a little bit more. It's not going to hurt you as much to sell him, I'd say. Yeah. What about Ian? Ian ended up at, only ended up at about 38 last night. He had like nine missed tackles in fantasy, yeah. if you're having a look at that. And then Hines yeah. ended up 68 or 69 or something. So. Yeah, the ghost, ghost Point King, even in Origin. <laughs> there must have been some turnover tackles. I think I counted up like 50-odd, 59 maybe, and he got 69. So there must have been some try saver or turnover tackles or something that they that they would have given him. But yeah, very, very interesting. That's for sure. And, and guys, just remember as well, at this time, we don't get a lot of information. You look at the late mail tab, which is now up on NRL.com. And it says that we will find something out this afternoon about the Dragons boys for backing up. And then guys that are playing on Saturday, like the Cowboys and the like, we'll get information on them tomorrow that they said. So you do have to be fluid with your trades. And I think what you said around getting rid of, if you are going to get rid of your buy players, whether it's a Crichton or a Strange, something like that, do them first and then have a little plan as if Cotter doesn't play, who's next on your hit list that you want, I suppose. is probably how I'm going to look at it. I'm going to have a bit of a play in the spreadsheet after we get off here and just work out, yeah, a bit of a plan of attack and as to if I'm trying to get 17 on the park, which guy goes first and... If Cotter goes, for example, and I'm not holding him through this, you know, this week and next week, like next week's a really tough one for mids, isn't it? When you've got King out, Hughes out, Salmon potentially, Preston mm. in edge, if you're going that way, if you do trade out Cotter, you need to get another mid or you need to have coverage there. Otherwise, you, you might be cooked next week and you have to make that extra trade. So really get in and and delve into what you need, I think is is what I'll be doing. And I, I might just do a little video um, going through me just sitting there on my spreadsheet and maybe that can help you guys out in my little internal thought process as to mumbling how I do lot, things. That would be pretty cool. The, the scoop and the Jamie internal mumblings as we go along and think things through. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be fun. I, I might give that a go this afternoon. Um, yeah, that'll be good. Check that out. Yeah, I, I, I think the solution that we're all missing here is we just buy all three of those Tigers options. Yeah, that's right. Get them all. Surely, <laughs> surely three out of the four or something will do well. You got Matt Amour as well, if you want to jump in that one. <laughs> he's an interesting one as well, isn't he? He's the other, the other cheap guy of the week. Like, as you said, yeah. Brendan Hands just looks like a bit of a slam dunk. But what do you like? Yeah. See, in my situation, I round 16, I'm, I'm needing a hooker, and he just adds another hooker to my, my list when I've already got that'll make it three. It's yeah, it's it's a tough one. I just think it's purely money and points, and points. at this stage. He's yeah. we have had guys get injured and use a lot of trades, so we're down on what we usually get per trade. And we need to maximize some of that. So if we can get a two hundred and fifty k uh buy out of him, I think that's valuable enough to still use one. Who would you probably be targeting for sixteen? Then would you be going for like uh, a JMK or an even an Appy or somebody like that? 
Yeah, it could it could be Reed after the buy as well. Yeah, that's not a bad shot. Um, but yeah, Reed or J- JMK looks good as well. But Reed obviously scores better. Um, there's Damien Cook as well. Misses seventeen though. But mm. I think I'm just gonna wait until that. And at worst, I'll play the one short and just save a trade. Um, if like mm. Rayleigh's still going well. Yeah, to assume because like if you buy. Actually, no, Reed, Reed helps for that, actually, because he misses 19 and, and Braley plays 19. So it would work out fine. But yeah. then I'd have, I would have three hookers in coming into the back end of the season. And like if Braley's a 48 or 50 average guy, like he's, he's, an, he's in my best 17. Yeah. So it's like, how many hookers do you want, I suppose? Yeah. I guess we, I guess we just got to monitor the minutes going forward because. Braley's had games where he's been playing 80 and then the last couple he's played 72, 69. And that's just just cuts his ceiling average down a little bit, maybe puts him down to a high 40s guy rather than low 50s guy. So mm. definitely one to watch. And I guess we'll make a decision in 16 on that. I think that's how I'm going to go with that one. And maybe for me, it's just looking at ha- as ha- at hands as just a, just a half. Maybe is it like how I'm going to look at the spreadsheet yeah. on it and... For me, I think he. If I have to make four trades, he's definitely coming in. Um, it's just yeah, what I do with that because I I think I definitely need a wing fullback myself this week one minimum, and if Armstrong's out, I, I might need two. So it could just be forced to make that decision between Garrick and Latrell and just get both. Yeah, yeah. Are you are you are you interested in Latrell? Oh, uh, I think. See, I think Trell does well in Origin and will do well in Origin if picked. I just think that the others have stuck their hand up more and whether they go with known pedigree versus form, I just don't know. Some people are insistent that Best and Burton are ahead and some people are like, no, nah, mm. Trell just Trell comes in. So I don't yeah, think exactly. anybody knows. It's just, it's like for feeder, pick it um, and go for it or don't. Yeah, a lot of my, my thoughts... If you're in back in it like situations, yeah, I'm still back. You're back further, obviously, but we're both not in the top bunch. So it's like, well, I'm looking. I don't own Garrick, right? Where you, mm. you don't either. Sweet. No. So you went Cola. Cool. He's seventy percent owned, right? Latrell's not. So I'm like, if I want to try and make up yeah. some ranks, maybe Latrell's the play, even though it's probably a little bit riskier. He's likely to score better. Garrick has Panthers this week. But there's a risk yeah, of origin, so it's he, like, do you make that re- like take that risk, knowing it could backfire eventually, and you might have to use an extra trade, but it could catapult you much further. But then again, Garrick, yeah. like you know, he's going to be fairly consistent anyway. So like, how much better could it be? I don't yeah, know. tough. Manly play the next two buys, which is well, sixteen and nineteen, which is interesting. But yeah, the, same look, as the trail. trail can be very important. Yeah, yeah. they got the same schedule. It's just. Hmm. he's got the center tag as well. So again, it's something I'll, I'll do my little internal monologue this afternoon. That'll be fun to do Need for to sure. That. That'll be fun. Yeah. There you go. Uh, anything else to focus on, mate? <laughs> You're moving up the private group ladder board. Yep. Leaderboard You're up to the 132 oh. now. Much better. <laughs> yeah. Finally, finally making a bit of progress. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, the main focus for this week will just be wait as late as you can wait for the news and order your trades is going to be, 80% of your decisions and then just pick somebody. If you're uncertain, there's plenty of uncertain guys. There's for feeder, there's Latrell, there's the Tigers guys. You just have to pick one and decide how that works for your team and if you've got enough money to do that. Well, that's all early, isn't it? Those those couple, mm-hmm. the Tigers, the Titans and the Rabbitohs, which we're looking to target, potentially like an AFB or something like that with the Waz. Nothing for Broncos or Sharks. No. Storm and Knights, just the Armstrong situation. If you're grabbing an Ellie Katoa, a Jerome Hughes even, obviously you grabbed him in round 12. He looks like a really good guy to, to grab this week as well because that's something to note as well, team. If you're, if you're sitting there and you're looking to sell Hines, you probably need another half. Like I don't know if you can yeah. get through with an Atkinson. You obviously can get through with weeks and stuff, but wing fullback like in round 16 is going to be fairly tough too, so you might need to play weeks in fullback. So just yeah. have a look at what you can do for round 16. That's probably the the big target from now. Hey, get through this week, but have your next eye on round 16 as well. Yep. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. So tra- trading by guys first and then see what ha- see what's happening with, with Cotter, really. It's probably 
and uh, and then Armstrong later. Well, if we have to trade Armstrong out later, then let's just say we're holding, holding. He's out. You want to make that trade? Who are we going to then? Storm. Mm, Panthers. If, well, oh, it's be, Garrick. It could. We could just switch to Sharp, couldn't we? If it is Sharp, could we just straight trade? Oh it? yeah, that's gross though. <laughs> Yeah, it is pretty, isn't it? He's not in the game yet, is he? Probably mm. not. No, I don't know whether that'll let us. They might not be quick enough. Because he's playing like SG ball and stuff. But he's youngster. Mm. Panthers, Eagles, it'd just be so Garrick two... if you don't own Garrick. Yeah, but... that's not a bad shout. If you don't own Garrick, he's probably the one to go Karaz. safe with. Uh, Bulldogs, if you don't oh, yeah. own Karaz, it's sort of already... Sitting there, to lucky by the cell blue, you still got. Yeah, there's. It's pretty much just Garrick, isn't it? It might just be a um, cop it, cop the six and play the sixteen or the fifteen in that scenario. You don't really want to force it unless you. Yeah, you haven't got Garrick yet, which maybe how I wait and see. I'm not sure. Again, I'll have to work that out. Finally, home and I can just chill out and and uh, do these things and nerd out in the spreadsheets. I know you love to do it as well. Is your spreadsheet looking yeah, all right? You're kind of set up fairly well. Or are you still working it out? Oh, I've I came into the origin season without as much spreadsheet as I usually do, actually, just because there's so much change and I saw how much it changed last year. But I am gonna set up um my plans for the next couple of buys, so like 16 and 17 moving forwards, especially. Yep. Um, and I think that'll really help pick a couple of these guys in the next few weeks. Yeah. It's awesome. That sounds good. I reckon we'll end it there, mate. I, I hope that was very helpful for for everyone there. We're looking to set up your trades. I answered a lot of questions uh, earlier this morning. So I think we'll be all set after I go through my little spreadsheet bit of fun. hope that helps as well. And uh, I suppose I'll be doing it anyway. I may as well hit record, hey, and talk some, talk some <laughs> shit. <laughs> That'll be good. Easy, guys. Enjoy your rest of your afternoon, Scootman, and uh, we'll catch everyone in the next video.